Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the Niche Maelstrom. This board features Niche's directional camber, which is just setback cam rocker. So you get rocker in the nose and then camber throughout the rest of the board. What this does is it gives you the load, pop, snap, and drive of traditional camber, but you got that ease of entry in and out of turns from that rocker, as well as more optimal powder float. This board is available in 154, 157, 160, 163, and 166. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day that started off with cooler temps that turned warm as the day was going on. So you started off with cool pow and it turned to hot pow. He had perfect corduroy. Basically, it was just perfect, kind of powderish day spring-like conditions with a couple inches that had fallen, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board isn't overly stiff for being a free ride board, and it is directional flex in nature, meaning softer nose that progressively stiffens back up to the tail. The torsional flex is noticeable. You can really twist this board when you need to. Now, when it comes to stability at low or moderate speeds, you feel a lot more vibrations underfoot. It just resonates back underneath. This board is very lively and very reactive, but when you get it up to speed, you stop feeling as much of that chatter. It really does do a good job of dissipating it. This is a board that the faster you go, the more stable it actually becomes. I think it's just sort of shooting out that kinetic energy to different areas of the board. So instead of it just hammering you right underfoot, it's driving it more out towards the edge and keeping it just at bay. So you gotta be aware of that. So basically the faster you go, the more damp this board feels, even though it's still lively and reactive, it doesn't feel like there's a jackhammer hitting you under the foot. But when you're slow, you're gonna feel more of it. The camber section of this board doesn't have a lot of camber to it, so it feels like a board that's well broken in when you load it up, which means there's no real fight to it. When you roll back on the tail and get it to snap, it's predictable, but not overwhelming. You know, you just sort of roll into whatever you're gonna pop off of, and you're able to boost with it, and know you'll get the job done, but it's not one of those boards where you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be able to ollie up and over anything in my path. When it comes to buttering on this board, you're gonna spend a little more time on the nose, obviously. You're just gonna be doing those like 180 pow butters with it. And you've got that rocker out there, which will help you, plus you've got this abrupt up kick in the nose. So with those combined in the flex of this board, you get your weight out there and you can really lock it in and you'll be able to just roll it once it's locked in more up on the nose because of that up kick and you're gonna get a deeper press. With the tail, you basically have to sit on it with all your weight and really push into it to get it to engage. But then again, this really isn't what this board's designed for. So it's basically high speed, 180 pow butters, 180 out when you're just sort of getting to the end of your line. So there's a slow and delayed edge to edge response in this board as you transition from toe to heel. You'll notice that it isn't as quick as other boards out there, but when you do get it on edge and you drive your knee into the center of the board, you get a ton of power out of that tail and that will whip you through a carve. Now, when you really lay it over, that taper does have some limitations and it can kick out on you. So you have to be aware of that. You have to learn where the balance is of how far you're gonna leverage this on edge before it starts to kick out. Now, it does grip on edge and it is swoopy from side to side of the run and you can hold that carve when you need to it's just there are limitations with it but when you really get it up to speed and you're just sort of meandering from one end of the trail to the other and you're just going up on banks and everything you feel it locked in and you can just push that power into that camber section to get more snap out of the turn as well who's this board for the free ride guy that likes to blast pow slash a little bit more than ripping a carve. So it's been a few years since the last time I rode this and since then they've changed factories and by and large I'd say that this board rides very similar to how the last one was that I rode. It's predictable in the sense that you know what it can do and where its limitations truthfully are. 
What I like about this board is that when you get up to speed, it just kills off chatter. So your knees, ankles, hips, lower back, all thank you at the end of the day. It's just those slower speeds. You start to notice that you're feeling a little more kinetic energy coming up from the board under foot. Like I said, it's a predictable ride. You know what you're gonna get with it. It's not bad. Comparable boards, the Cabin Mountain Tools, Peregrine, the Capita Navigator, the K2 Excavator. Binding recommendations, the Ride A9, the Union Atlas Pro, the Jones Apollo. This has been my review of the Niche Maelstrom. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.